situation. Um, in fact, some of us from the what we call computer science background, we knew of um, CCITT data communication <coughs> and security standards way before even hearing the name ITO. So uh, for us, it's really a privilege to have our Dr. Kremer here to give us an overview of the standards activities undertaken by the standardization uh, sector of the ITO. Thank 
framework, web services, directory, identity management, risk management, cyber security, incident management, and biosecurity, counter spam, security management, secure application, telegram network, ubiquitous telecommunication services, service oriented architecture security. The ranking on multicast, traceback, nucleus sensor network. And this is the rate of others on many, many items. Let me introduce several four security recommendations. Their ranking recommendation is 12.05, which is overview of cyber security. X.1206 Abandoned Virtual Framework for Automated Authentication of Security Related Information and Dissemination of Keys. X.1231 Technical Strategies on Cyber and Spam. We have four recommendation in this area. This is first one, the second technology handbook in counter and email spam, technical framework for counter and email spam, overall aspects of counter and spam in IT-based multimedia applications. It is mentioned our very important and strategic direction is identity management. Digital identity is a set of claims made by one digital subject about itself or another. It's important that there are a number of different forms to this object. And we understand that security standardization is a very important issue to solve many problems. Networks are increasingly distributed, diverse, and fact based where access to services can be based on a basic assumption. Security and trust of identity information in this environment is significantly more complex. Cold methods of managing of identity information in a living setting has caused significant cyber security problems. Consequently, to endure a vast set of secure and trusted capabilities is needed and IBM is a tool. So IBM is a set of capabilities that essentially can be discussed in device and application, facility which is used to coverage of several and secure exchange identity data, provide significantly better identity lifecycle management can allow user control of customary identifiable information. <coughs> what is given in this paper? Managing digital identities and customary identifiable information is a key aspect for improving security of network and cyber security. First, IBM recommendations determined under our past procedure X.1250 capabilities for global identity management trust and interoperability. X.1251 framework for user control of digital identity. It will talk 2720 MGM identity management framework. We work collaboratively with other stakeholders, including ICA. Liberty Alliance, FIBIS, OASIS. Some words about challenges. Addressing security to enhance trust and confidence of users in networks, applications, and services. Find balance between centralized and distributed efforts on developing security standards. Legal and regulatory aspects of cybersecurity spam identity privacy, address full cycle vulnerability threat and risk analysis, uniform definition of cybersecurity terms and definitions. It's 
Thank you for cooperation and collaboration across the many bodies doing cybersecurity work within the ITU and with external organizations. Keeping ICT security database. Absolutely. Very important initiatives is learning standards, not only from technical issues, but from business applications. There are a number of standards in cybersecurity outside communication and information security. But a standard is the real standard when it's used in real world applications. Business and government bodies need to learn more about standards from their business applications rather than from a technical point of view. Our new initiative is prepare reporting for the next three years and business use of the main security standards. To include answers of questions such as who does the standard set, status and summary of standards, business benefits, technology review, technical implementation. Another very important initiative is Resolution 76 of WPC year 2003, studies related to performance and interoperability testing, assistance to developing countries, and the possible future IT mass funding. Interoperability of international telecommunication networks was the main reason to create IT in the year 2001. Conformance testing would increase the chance of interoperability of the equipment and public IT standards. Technical training and institutional capacity development for testing and certification are essential issues for countries to improve their conformity, capacity quality, to promote the development of advanced telecommunication networks, to increase global connectivity. I would like to provide you with uh, more information with these references. And as a conclusion, I would like to say several words on uh, IT rules and standardization. First of all, we need to standardize and learn information security much more as a system which is required to be created and managed rather than a subject of sale of services which is possible to buy. The ITU is the leader in such a systematic understanding and standardizing of information security. There are a number of different languages in which people talk about information security. The ITU is the leader in creating such a common language for better understanding and creation of cybersecurity infrastructure. There is a number of standards in the field of information security, and the ITU is the leader in joining efforts of different standardization bodies in preparing reports on information security standardization processes from the point of view of their business application. I would like to invite all interested bodies to become our members and join our efforts in such an interesting and important collaboration as creating of cybersecurity infrastructure. Thank you very much. I think we have uh, listened to all the presenters and I thank Dr. Crema for giving us an overview of uh, what the standardization sector is doing. Um, <coughs> we have the, if there's anybody in the audience who would like to get additional information or if you have a question, there's just one thing I would like to say in uh, wrapping up what the, uh, Dr. Crema mentioned is one of the main problems today we are facing globally in the internet is how we secure the domain name system. And um, when you look at what exactly it is that 
we need to do the relevant standards, the RFC 4023 and the rest of uh, the, the, the other standards that follow it. It is about ensuring that we can establish the authentication of the data, where the data comes from, when you do a GMS request. It is also to make sure that we can ensure the integrity of that data when we do a trying to drop a GMS request. And behind that is a core ITU standard which came out in July 1988, the ITU TX509. So um, it is something which uh, I thought it was important to bring up because data communication standards have been something that ITU has been involved in in quite some time. Um, with that remark, I would like to thank you all for coming here. And uh, if there's anybody who has a question, we are here. I know that we are now eating into your lunch time, but um, I don't eat lunch, so uh, I'm here. Uh, if you have any questions uh, to any of the speakers, please uh, take the floor. Thank you.
you roll is uh, one of facilitation. I think that's one of the most effective uh, areas for them. It's not clear to me how much of this is facilitation and how much of this is uh, operational engagement. I'm just trying to ascertain the, the difference. Um, <coughs> I'd say it's a very complex organization. Sometimes we get misunderstood that we are just facilitator for C5. But the reason we are facilitator for C5 is because we have cyber security enshrined in our manual. So there are operational activities in cyber security which are part of IT's manual. That is the reason why it is the sole facilitator. So we are not only facilitating, we are also implementing. Any other questions? Perhaps a comment. IQ's uh, goal uh, here is actually uh, the efficient because uh, you already have a lot of uh, contacts across multiple uh, developing countries that uh, the current international search community, including FERC, including other uh, service provider communities, may not always have. And uh, we do have contacts with, for example, uh, the government of Chad Bose, which are often uh, the sole uh, monopoly provider in uh, most of the countries because they might not have enough open internet economy to support one uh, provider all the way for the region. So as long as IQ uh, helps uh, bootstrap uh, a search in a country that doesn't have a search, and uh, these uh, search can, of course, engage uh, with uh, several international initiatives that uh, other search are uh, already engaged in, and uh, perhaps uh, work with the representatives of other C search to help uh, provide. Uh, IQ always does uh, remain very open about taking external experts uh, to help uh, provide the country building. And it uh, serves as a very useful bridge, and it also benefits very con considerable external expertise uh, to help uh, people in uh, developing countries uh, bootstrap these activities. Am I right? Yeah. If I may just add something, uh, setting up said themselves are quite difficult. Uh, uh, but something which I um, we have mentioned is that those countries who are going to have this, we just call them cyber security centers. Um, we need to be able to also provide them with information on the incident and through the capacity building. I think Marco explained that much better than myself. We have to, we cannot wait two to three years, as you mentioned in, in our session yesterday, that it might take like three years. We cannot wait three years to set up a set in the country, we have to, as Suresh mentioned, bootstrap the process, have something in place where they can benefit from the, ne the minimum necessary to respond to incident, first to get information about the, what is happening through impact, and then through the capacity building activities, start growing towards becoming something like a set, but during that time that it's supposed to grow, it does not completely it's not cut out of the global uh, network of uh, people who should be uh, aware of what is going on. Just one follow-up uh, question. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just asking uh, primarily for clarification as to the role of the ITU. Are you encouraging? Are you facilitating? Um, are you are you providing training and uh, operational expertise? I'm just asking in terms of the objectives based on the recent uh, tasking of the ITU with the CERT slash CSERT uh, topic here. Okay. Well, the, again, uh, the double approach of the ITU is that the ITU development sector, as some of you know, has a clear operational role because it is a thing mandated by the by the member state. We are now reacting also to this what we want to do. We are reacting also to the Membership, to what the membership wants, okay? For this reason, I mean, I think it's 
them to come in. Some countries had an idea too of what they had to do. So there, there were, the idea was a little bit more, I mean, uh, can I say operational if you want, because we go there, we help them establishing the necessary infrastructure and the, the operationalization of this concept is just, you know, supporting the activities that are necessary, even to process implementation. So, I mean, uh, I, I don't think there is, uh, I mean, at least from my point of view, clearly identified what is, you know, the facilitation role, what is the implementation of the operational role. Sometimes it's just uh, simply facilitating, as you say, the process, the process. Sometimes, as we are doing in establishing the infrastructure in countries that they don't have, it's going there with the expertise, bringing expertise, bringing funding, I mean, putting together, let's say, stakeholders that, I mean, that, that they are particularly important in the process. And this is not just facilitation, from my point of view. Any more questions? Please don't forget, we are a technical organization. Uh, when I talk of, uh, I mentioned about being in about a hundred countries, it's not to do work parts. It's sitting there with experts implementing projects. Uh, most of us are either engineers or computer scientists, and especially with the creation of the development sector where countries, we were, at the beginning, what happened was, ITOG was like a pool of experts that countries would call because they know that we will be neutral. We are not from any company. So it would, that's how it, the development sector came up. You see the technical cooperation department where they were experts, you know, very well qualified in their fields and they would be called upon by countries when they wanted to set up networks because they wanted neutral and objective advice so it's not influenced by maybe one manufacturer or the other. Because we are accountable to those countries, being our member states, so we have to give them the best technical advice that we could. So that is um, a little bit of background. And just to, to finalize this, I'm, I'm an advocate that we've been partnering with the ITU in the past, for example, uh, I'm with Carnegie Mellon, but on assignment in Qatar to help build the National Seafood Bank. As you know, the uh, WTBC conference was held in, in Doha. We uh, conducted one of the regional meetings on behalf of Question 221. And I think there's a lot to be said for the uh, compiled uh, uh, best practice information and some of the toolkits. I'm working now in a region where there is a great need for more of these types of programs. When we're talking about national cybersecurity centers or CSERs and the like, there are perhaps uh, two or three operational in the entire MENA region another half dozen on the way. And the reason I'm asking these questions is I'd like to understand the emerging role of the ITU because they're, uh, in terms of long-term partnering or uh, cooperation or uh, facilitation, it wasn't clear to me how much of this was encouraging, facilitating, uh, training, even to the extreme of, of uh, managing incidents or facilitating the exchange of information. Uh, I know this, this role is still being defined, but it would be important to understand going forward the ITU is, uh, sees its role, uh, and, and how much of this is still facilitation as compared to the operational uh, side. And I'm, I'm a little bit fuzzy about, about where that line is uh, right now. But it certainly doesn't need to be resolved uh, today. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not too complicated. Um, we, I think Dr. Kramer mentioned the union was founded in 1865 when it was necessary that there needs to be coordination in the development of telegraph networks. So we actually provide global coordination services, operational global coordination services. Um, a colleague from the DR talked about some of it. Um, we have global databases which are serving all members on all member states. But what we do is we work a lot through partnerships. Um, ITU as an organization in its headquarters in Geneva. It's not going to be running the systems that will be getting and sending back feed on incidents. We have a partnership with Impact. They have built a state-of-the-art infrastructure just for that. And then we extend our partnership framework now to all those who are interested, governments, academic institutions, businesses. So there you would um, see us playing the role of creating an environment where people can come and work together. But there are also other functions where we actually do operational 
low back coordination role. So it just depends on the specific activity. And um, you know, we cannot have, I don't know, 200 people in Geneva just dealing with coordinating our sets. It's, you know, this is a little bit too much. So we will work with a partner. Who will work with partners? They have most of the major cybersecurity companies in the world sending feeds and working for the first time. The Symantec and the Chen Michaels and the, uh, Kaspersky are all for the first time working together, sending global feeds on threats. And this is what is going to now get into this country. So it depends on the specific activity. We cannot really, it's not a black and white thing. Some activities will get deep into it and uh, some of it will just provide the framework of our experience. I, I have one last follow-up question. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about the clearinghouse role, and you talk about uh, this exchange of information amongst the CSER organizations, uh, one organization that wasn't mentioned earlier actually has this nominal role now, that is uh, first in the form of incident response and security team. So do you see your work uh, partnering with them or uh, complementing them or in some ways competing with them? Yeah, I think the, the, the right word would be partnering. Okay. Uh, we, we ourselves, uh, 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 Proficient is part of the first group is part of our uh, not competing at all.